Hey, so I know I'm looking slightly scuffed over here, but welcome. How's it going? It's been a while since I put a video up. I haven't been lazy. I wanted to play around and render a bunch of objects. Specifically, I wanted to start from the worst possible case of rendering a whole bunch of different objects randomly generated and sort of gradually reduce the draw calls and things and see how it affects performance. So I'm actually seeing these results live, I actually tested it a little bit, modified it, but I'm talking too much, so let's get into it. Okay, so here's my, my little program. We have a whole bunch of models like that. This is just a whole bunch of models that I collected online. I didn't do a lot of work to vet them, but it's displaying. Currently we have 1000 models. There are 14 different types of models. Each model has its own texture and everything. And I'm just applying some basic lighting. So a thousand of those. And the way this is working is the worst possible way. So it's generating an individual draw call for each object. It's stepping through all the objects one by one, generating the model transform uploading that to the GPU, binding the appropriate material, issuing a draw call. Now, given that, it's actually doing pretty well. Thank you, NVIDIA. Graphics card works. Can push a lot of triangles. So let me just run the numbers here and I'll pop up the results. So we have on the left hand, the number of objects that I'm generating. These objects have, at the most, maybe 100,000 triangles or something. It's not that much. But anyway, and then on the right, we have the frame time. So we can see, <clears throat> sorry, we can see that we're doing pretty well up to, yeah, up to about 1,000. We have pretty good frame time. And at 10,000, because we're going up in factors of 10, it becomes unplayable. Okay, so that's my baseline. Let's see if we can improve from that. Okay, we're back. So the first optimization I'm going to make is indexed drawing. That's right, I wasn't even using indexed drawing. How much difference does it make? Let's have a look. So this is still using one draw call per object, just adding in an index buffer. Now, as we can see here, obviously, always OBS is making some difference, but where are we? Yeah, about yeah, close to 400 frames per second. Okay, so I'll, I'll flash up the results. And I was pretty surprised by this. It made a really big difference. So that's very cool. Okay, on with the show. Okay, if you can hear fan, it's um, Australian summer. Okay, so the next optimization I am trying is texture arrays. Instead of having a whole bunch of individual textures that I have to bind each time, I'm going to load all of those into a texture array, which is like a, think of it like a 3D object where every texture is a slice. And this means that I just bind all of those arrays up front and then index into them, reducing the number of bind calls. Now, funnily enough, this actually reduced performance a little bit. So here I have my objects, although one of the benefits is that this red texture now worked because with texture arrays, all the textures need to be the same color. Sorry, the same size. So I went through manually resized all the textures and this red texture was like 8K. So it was way too big to, um, to load in properly and it was coming up black before, but now it works. So as we can see, we have gone from almost 400 to a solid 300. I'm not going to go with this technique going forwards, but um, it's very cool to see. A bindless texture is basically we load in a texture, create a texture on the GPU, then we create a handle, which is a 64-bit unsigned integer, which references that. And having a bunch of handles, we can then create an array of samplers. It's adding an extra level of interaction, but it sets it up so that we do not need to bind every sampler on the fly when we need it. So 
With that extra level of indirection does come a slight performance hit. Here's the app. It's running. Oh, actually, it's going pretty well. 400 or so frames per second. Oh, well, anyway, but there is a performance hit. There's a balance between fewer function calls and the performance hit. I do need some sort of resource lumping because what I'm going to be doing ultimately is as little work as possible. So I'm pretty happy with bindless textures. I'm going to keep that. Just a little side note on bindless textures. One of the disadvantages is that they're, they're not really supported by RenderDoc. And so from this point forwards, I've had to use NVIDIA Ensight graphics in order to profile and debug, but it's pretty good. Anyway, on with the show. Oh, sorry, performance. I'll flash that up. Here's the performance. And now on with the show. Okay, so anytime I'm trying a new technique, generally what I'll want to do is work it out on the CPU first and then on the GPU. It's just easier to debug that way. The reason I'm saying this is this technique, batching, doesn't really work so well on the CPU, which is why performance isn't so good. But the basic idea is, let's say we have a thousand objects. Let's say we have 10,000 objects. For each of those objects, it would be better to, to, okay, for each of those objects, there's only a certain number of object types. So I've got 14 different types of objects. Clearly it's better to issue 14 mesh bindings rather than 1000. And so what this system is doing is we take in the bunch of objects, throw the IDs into the appropriate sets, and then when we come to draw, we can just iterate based on the object type, bind the appropriate mesh, and then go through and issue a draw call for every instance of that. Anyway, so like I said, it basically does the same thing, but the performance is a little worse than normal. Or better, I don't know, it's the same. It's the same, same performance, about 400. And I will go ahead and throw up all the stats now. Okay, let's keep going. Instance rendering is the concept that instead of the CPU telling the GPU to do something you know, with every single draw call, instead the CPU will tell the GPU to do the same thing a number of times. The GPU can then run its own loop, do whatever it, you know, get the job done basically, and not listen to the CPU, which the, the more independent we can make those two things from each other, the, uh, the better it's going to go. Now, having said that, I should just see what the performance is. I was profiling, profiling, measuring this before, and it wasn't, it was about the same. But who knows? Okay, it's about the same, maybe a little worse. But I'm going to keep doing this because we're going step by step. And as I add more little changes, something's going to happen. Spoiler alert, something's going to happen. Okay, so that is instanced rendering. Hey, how's it going? Little time warp there. I had, you know, I just come back from work. I'm pretty tired, but um, I have this. Oh yeah. Okay. So buffer lumping. What I'm doing here is I'm grabbing all the models and I'm congealing all of their vertices into one single large buffer. Same with the indices. This does not make a dramatic difference in the render time. But it does set it up so that in order to render all of these objects, I only need to bind one buffer. And the less I change state, the better it's going to turn out. Okay, let's press on. Vertex pulling is the concept that instead of binding in, you know, arrays and attribute pointers and things, we simply bind in storage buffers and access them. Now, this was a technique that actually surprised me the most because gen generally what I read was that it would be about the same or a little better in terms of performance. What I'm finding is that it's markedly worse. So I guess this is an axis along which I could optimize. I should probably look into 
ways to make this more performant. But as you can see, I have got, you know, almost, I've almost lost 50% of my performance in this implementation. This is actually a big surprise. Hmm. I don't know what's going on there. I'll have to look into it in future. SIMD, single instruction, multiple data. This is a little, little experiment I did in quickly updating rotations by adding eight at a time. Now, the thing that surprised me is that, again, we didn't have a significant improvement. This would indicate to me that the, the project is not CPU bound. The CPU time is not the issue. Turns out adding floats together is very, um, yeah. To be honest, my, my spirits are a little down. That vertex pulling I thought was going to do wonders. I think when I get all these optimizations done, I'm going to do a, a version without vertex pulling and see what that does. But anyway, this is SIMD. We now see our hero at, at their lowest point. We've implemented indirect drawing now. The way this works, by the way, is let's say we're using instance rendering. So we've got it down to 14 draw calls because we have 14 different objects. But that would still be issuing 14 instanced draw calls. Now, indirect rendering is the idea that we pre-record the function parameters somewhere in VRAM, and then we tell the GPU, okay, go, and it reads that. Doesn't do a round trip to the CPU. However, like I said, we are at our lowest point. And what that means is, despite our best efforts, performance still remains about the same as it was before. Will our luck change though? Spoiler alert, it gets better. Take a look at this. Here, I have got a thousand random objects, randomly distributed. The same objects which were giving me about, what, 200 frames per second? Currently, this is rendering at, well, I mean, I guess, I guess it depends where I look, right? But let's look over here. We're getting, yeah, almost 2,000 frames per second. Wow. How am I doing that? Well, what I'm doing, I mean, right, so the purpose of indirect drawing is not to reduce 14 instanced draw calls to one. That's good. That's not the point. The point with indirect drawing is you are meant to be able to dynamically update those draw calls. So what I'm doing here is on the CPU, before I include every object, I'm just testing it against the view or the bounds of the view, basically. And that means that I, I'm attempting to only draw things that are within my view frustrum. Um, it's not a perfect system. So if, if we look here on the left, this block, oh, depending, in some cases, some blocks will, will randomly pop in and out. There we go, like that, that tree down there just popped in. It's not a perfect system, but as a proof of concept, look at that. Wow. I'm blown away. That's a incredible, incredible performance. That's crazy, bro. Okay. Can we do better? In an attempt to do a bit better, I shipped those tests over to the GPU. Now, something which is surprising is that Although it asymptotes to the same, or first of all, surprising that it asymptotes to the same performance. And secondly, for low object counts, it is less efficient. We can see the same scene, 1600 frames per second. Invoking a compute shader uh, does have some overhead. Yeah, it's not perfect. It does have some overhead. And I'm also using atomic integers to count the number of instances for each of these objects. So long story short, it's 
It's just uh, not quite the bang I was hoping for. Hmm. But this has been an interesting experiment, and it's given me some some further avenues that I can go down. Anyway, there is a happy ending, and that is basically I took the CPU rendered version, removed the programmable vertex pulling, and remember that scene I had before with 1000 objects? Well, here it is. Hello, window. It's rendering currently at, what, 4100? 4000 frames per second? And this is with OBS. Anyway, take, take my word on it. Trust me, bro. This is going super, super fast. As a matter of fact, to demonstrate the power, let's say we dial this up from 1,000 randomly generated objects to 100,000 randomly generated objects. It will struggle a little, but we're now getting what? This is a bit messy, but look, we've got a... Uh, that frustrum cullings, like I said, it's not perfect, but... Anyway, we've got all this stuff. We've got, we've got so much stuff that's crazy. And we're getting, what, 66 frames per second. Now, if I were to work in occlusion culling, clearly a lot of this stuff would be removed and we could further dial up that performance. So, for now, I'm happy with where we're at. I will probably be making some little, little mini tutorials on some of these techniques because they're interesting but um yeah that'll be it for now a hundred thousand meshes with yeah like at least a thousand triangles each except for those blocks but anyway that's been my little science experiment i hope you enjoyed it and oh yeah, that texture mapping not so great but um i will see you again soon all right Bye.